Hi guys, it's Cerise and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another book recommendations video and today I wanted to talk about books that specifically talk about or relate in some way to ballet. If you didn't know, I love books about ballet. I'm not somebody who like did ballet as a kid for years and is like really good at it but then stopped and now I'm still obsessed with it like I've always been obsessed with ballet but I never really got into it I was kind of just scared to start as a child I'm not really sure why um, I really regret it and I've tried doing it as an adult here and there a little bit but it's really really hard to get into when you are already older and not as flexible and just like don't really have a, the, the brain for that kind of thing anymore, at least not as much. So because not ever starting ballet is one of the biggest regrets of my life, I choose to vicariously live out that untended to passion by reading books about ballet. And if you're like me or you just like to read about ballet as well, this is the video for you. So these types of recommendations videos are, I think, more likely to be viewed by people that aren't subscribed to my channel. So that's kind of why I do them, um, to kind of just like give you like a summed up glimpse into like a certain area that I like to read about. But if you've been watching my channel for like a while, you've seen these books before. This is just kind of like the summary version, right? So yeah, that being said, let's jump right into some books about ballet that I think are really really awesome. So three or four books that are YA and then two that are adult. This duology is called Tiny Pretty Things and Shiny Broken Pieces by Sona Terapatra and Danielle Clayton. This is about a bunch of teenage girls in a very prestigious elite ballet school that are all competing with one another for like the best spots in a dance performance. At least that's what they do in the first book and I think in the second one they're competing for like spots at a company. Um, so it's kind of in that sense very stereotypical like approach to telling ballet stories and it definitely like does a lot of ballet tropes like all the things that you automatically think about when you think about ballet probably happen in this these books the kids the girls are all very competitive to the point of kind of being horrible people they're like sabotaging it's each other like friendship real friendship kind of doesn't exist because no matter what they're all just super ready to throw each other under the bus just to get a better spot and like more fame and whatever. I don't know to what extent these are realistic but I do imagine some of that and while they might not be like perfect depictions of the actual ballet world I think it is so fun and like light-hearted and quick like summer reads and especially if you're into like things like Riverdale I might I don't know I haven't actually watched that much Riverdale but this is kind of this kind of like falls for me into the same category as like shows like Riverdale that are just like fast food for the brain but because these deal with ballet it just makes them so much more appealing to me and hopefully do to you too and yeah definitely recommend to check them out if you want just like a light fun quick entertaining read. The next book is very different from that one. It's called A Company of Swans by Eva Ibbotson. This is a very different take on ballet. It's actually historical fiction. It follows a young girl whose biggest dream it is to dance in a ballet company. But because at the time being a dancer was kind of looked down upon and because she comes from a more like prestigious background, um, her family is very much against her doing it. So she ends up kind of running away with a ballet company to the Amazon where she ends up living like in the jungle in a completely new environment, dancing in this company. Company. There's also like a romance element. It's such a like whimsical story. If you've ever read anything by Eva Ibbotson before, you kind of will know that that is sort of her style. It's just kind of a very beautiful story where ballet is a focal point, but it's not as closely um, or not as central to the story overall as in the previous books. I highly, highly recommend it. Just kind of to anybody in general, but in particularly if you're a fan of ballet. And then the last way book I wanted to mention is I think probably the first ballet related book I've ever read and that is Bunheads by Sophie Flack. This is one of the most underrated books ever in my opinion. It is written by a professional ballet dancer and it really like wears tiny pretty things maybe isn't super realistic and more on like the dramatic side. This really, at least by my estimation, seems to 
like show a much fuller picture a much more complete picture of what the ballet world is actually like because the author has gone through these things that herself um, and she's experienced them herself and so she's used drawn a lot from that to put into this book the plot of this is again pretty typical it follows a 19 year old girl called Hannah who's part of a very prestigious Manhattan ballet company and she has to struggle with like relationships within the company dance rehearsals the pressure to be better and rise up the ranks and like she starts to um, kind of question if this is really where she should be because she also starts to like venture out a little bit um, over the borders of the ballet company because I think it can be kind of like a very um, reclusive um, society community look beyond that a little bit and tries to figure out if this is really still where she wants to be so i just really enjoyed this and appreciated it for the to me again seemingly realistic um depiction of the ballet life and the ba ballet school and company life and also just for the storytelling i just really really enjoyed this and i highly highly recommend it again as i kind of do all of these and then the last two books i want to talk about are adult books at least one is adult fiction and the other is non-fiction but it deals with very heavy topics and so i think i would classify it as adult i'm not sure if like this is something that you necessarily want to put before a young adult person although i'm not a fan of censorship of anybody so read what you want to read little piece they thrown into the mix there so the fiction book i wanted to recommend is the crane stands by meg howry i've talked about this a lot because it was one of my favorite books of 2018 this book is also a very different take on the ballet thing because as i've said i feel like the most prevalent take is or like the most prevalent slice of ballet life that they that authors choose to show or like movie makers also choose to show is this super competitive um trying to make it type of thing like it usually the main character is usually in their teens and they're trying they're just still struggling they're trying to make it this book on the other hand follows two sisters that are i think in their late 20s and they've already made it like from the beginning of the book they're part of a ballet company they're very good at their job they're very passionate about dance and it kind of just like skips all that and kind of tells the story of ballet from a different angle which i really appreciated so it follows as i said two sisters and one of them has actually had to quit ballet because she has been struggling with some um, mental health issues and her sister who is still doing ballet is blaming herself heavily for this and um, the book follows her as a main character as she kind of goes about her daily routine of dancing and kind of um you know being following her dreams still but at the same time not really being sure anymore if this is really what she wants kind of questioning her choices and attitude toward the whole thing based on what happened to her sister also these parts of like dealing with her guilt over what happened and things like that so it's a very complex very multi-dimensional story and character and i really really loved reading about this it made me very emotional i just thought it was a very beautiful depiction of a sister relationship as well and just in general i love meg Howard's writing and i think she told a phenomenal story here that does have a lot to do with ballet but it's just also again more about kind of the story that she tells here and i just really really enjoyed this and highly recommend it again to absolutely everyone and finally the non-fiction book i wanted to talk about is called dancing on my grave an autobiography by gelsey kirkland with greg lawrence her husband so if you're not part of the ballet scene and i personally also didn't know this but gelsey kirkland used to be a very famous very very prolific dancer her name is connected to uh, other famous names such as george balanchine and mikhail barishnikov she was also in a relationship with barishnikov that ended unhappily and most importantly unfortunately she struggled a lot with drug addiction um i think especially cocaine and um because she just could not deal with the pressure anymore and the um yeah just like the huge weight that had been put on her shoulders um through her like career as a ballerina and i thought this was a very touching memoir it was very candid i kind of tell all story that is very sad and very moving but also kind of a story of like overcoming these things and like not giving way to this destruction or like self-destruction that 
you know, sometimes you embark on that path and you feel like you can't ever turn back, but she managed to do it. And it's um, just like a fully fleshed life story. And I, I just really, really appreciate this book. It's definitely hard to read at times because her struggles are very real and very hard. And, um, you know, a lot of people, I think, go through this, and especially in correlation with ballet, like things like drug addiction, I've never really heard discussed anywhere else. So I think this is a very, very well written and um, well constructed book. And if you're into memoirs, read this. If you're into ballet, read this. If you want to know more about Gelsey Kirkland, just read this. I think it's a little bit difficult to find. As you can see, I have like a second hand copy that's a little bit older. Um, but if you can find that somewhere, I definitely recommend to check it out and uh, read it. There's also some pictures in it, which I always appreciate. And yeah, just 100% recommend this. It's very, very, very good. But yeah, that is it for all of the ballet books that I wanted to recommend to you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have other books that you really love that have to do something with ballet, leave them in the comments down below. I'm always, always on the hunt for my ballet related books because like that itch <laughs> to like vicariously relive a life that uh, just was not meant to be mine is very much a recurring thing for me. So leave other recommendations in the comments. Also, while you're there, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I upload every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday and click the bell icon so you're always notified because otherwise YouTube might just not let you know, which is very tragic and you don't want that to happen. But yeah, I hope to see you back very soon with another video and until then, have a lovely week. Bye.